I am so unbelievably grateful for being me. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not you. <laughs> and you're so glad you're not me. But you know what? I'm so glad I'm me. Because <laughs> I kind of enjoy it. You know, I kind of like being me. You know, the me that I am. <laughs> but there's a point to it that you should get to that place of really kind of like liking yourself, you know, somewhat. I mean, don't get me wrong, you're as much a sinner as I am, and <laughs> you're pretty screwed up. <laughs> you're being worked on as much as I am. We're kind of like doing an overhaul here, you know, like a, a makeover that's going to take a while. But the point is, is that you can at least see the body works being worked on, you know? <laughs> There's some accomplishments. So, I think it's a good thing, you know, to be glad and rejoice in what the Lord has done, but also to be thankful for who you are, you know? I mean, isn't it true that God died for you and that's pretty important? Well, then, maybe you're worth dying for. Boy, isn't that a thought? And I'm kind of kind of glad that, you know, maybe I am worth something, you know, to God. And so, I think that his opinion of me is more important than my opinion of me. So, I change my opinion because he seems to think that he is loving me so much that he would die for me. And I'm going, well now, let me see. Would I die for me? Heck no, man, I'd uh, Dump that person, you know, in the dumpster a long time ago. <laughs> Get rid of that sucker. Fire him. <laughs> but no, you see, God isn't that way. He tends to take those things that seem to be the rejection and makes him the exception. He uses what other people may have not considered to use or to even care about. And I like that, you know, because then that makes me think about myself. And I kind of look at myself and I say, Self, <laughs> your self-worth isn't based upon what people think, but what God thinks. So who cares what I think? Except for today, I happen to think like God thinks. And I like thinking like He thinks because then I can sit down and say, Yeah, I'm kind of glad to be me. I kind of enjoy who I am. I'm beginning to enjoy it more and more the older I get. The older I get, the more I like it. And the more I like it, the more I get. You know, it seems like God is just doing all kinds of neat things. And I like that. Because I used to worry about who I was, you know, and why I had these different kind of ideas or different perspectives or maybe even had kind of like a goofy attitude at times, you know. And I used to think, well, man, you know, Maybe I should try to keep up with the Joneses, you know, by being styling and finding out, you know, what what kind of style the latest styles are so that I can be styling and keep up with the fads, you know, and the, the latest fashion, you know, the latest tips. The latest things where he said one time on some kind of TV show he's got, I guess, that I like being me. It's so good to be me. You know, and I'm kind of like, it's so good to be me. I'm glad that God is in me so that I can say that because if God wasn't in me, I wouldn't like me, you know, at all. But I like what he's doing in me. And so I finally come to this place where, you know, I kind of like being me. I kind of enjoy my life. I enjoy what God has done in my life. I enjoy where I'm at what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Maybe that's something that you should start to think about. What are you doing and are you enjoying it? Are you thankful for your life? Are you thankful for the way you're living it? Are you glad for who you are, as you are, the way you are? Draw me 
we will run after you. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. You know, people tell me that you have to give this hellfire and brimstone message, you know. And you got to tell them about hell, and then you got to have a salvation message, and you got to put sin in it, and how they're separated from God, and you got to do this, that, and the other thing, and all these things that you got to put all into this message, you know, to tell people about God's love. And I'm like, you know, why can't we just say that God loves you? You know what I mean? I, I'm kind of like not trying to play down hell because I've taught on hell a lot. You know, I mean, I do that pretty regularly. <laughs> It's like, hey, you know what? You really want to go to hell? Go to hell, because <laughs> you're going to be there permanently. Or go to heaven. It's your choice, you know. But you're not going to get to choose after you lose the opportunity you got now. So don't snooze it, or you'll lose it. But since you have an opportunity, why would you want to be eternally damned? <laughs> kind of stupid. So be eternally blessed. Head for the heavens, you know, because you sure don't want to head for the hell, because you're going to be there if you don't do something about it. So, you know, I do lots of teachings on hell and all that stuff, you know, but the point is, is that, man, I got saved by love because I saw what people had and how people loved and how they loved with the love of God. And that love of God that they had drew me to repentance. It caused me to seek after God. And, you know, any time that I ever backslid or fell apart or fell away or fell to pieces or whatever, it was always God's love that brought me back. Never some kind of message of terror or, you know, convince them, you know, by some kind of theological or intellectual, you know, stimulation of the mind by being able to argue them into heaven. Because so far, I haven't found anybody argued into heaven, you know. I mean, even C.S. Lewis says something about the love of God, you know, at some point in time. But... I believe that it's really God's love that a person responds to. It isn't God's condemnation or man's pointing the finger or, you know, highlighting the fact that you're really screwed up. The people come to the conclusion in their own time that they want to be loved and accepted for who they are. They want to find something more to life than what they've experienced because they find out this isn't all it's cracked up to be. It doesn't work out always the way they want. Oh, sure, maybe like in their 20s or something, you know, you think you got it, you know, the, the brass ring or whatever, you know. But then, as you go through life, you begin to discover there's something, got to be something more than this. Because if this is all there is, what a bummer. What a disappointment life truly is, unless there's more to it than what we see and touch and feel. I drew them with cords of a man with bands of love. I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Behold, the Lamb of God. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Whom have I in heaven but you? There is none upon earth that I desire besides you. We love him because he first loved us. You know, I don't trust people that have just suddenly come to God out of some kind of like assertion, you know. It's kind of like, tell me how much you love God and what God has done for you. Then I kind of buy into this idea of you, you know, really want to be a Christian, that you really are one. Because people that love God want to please Him. People that love God want to do what He says. People that love God want to be and stay in that first love. They're excited. They're joyful. They just can't, can't get enough, you know. The people that kind of like, you know, have kind of like gotten old and cold and bitter and, you know, kind of, I don't know what you want to call it, just fallen out of love, I'm not really all that satisfied with them. You know, I look at them and I say, and there's a quite a few famous preachers right now that are out there like that. And I kind of go, you know what, maybe they loved the Lord at one time and maybe they do love the Lord now, but I don't hear them talking about love much. I sure hear a lot of theology, but I don't really want to deal with them, you know, because, no offense, I'd rather find someone that's passionately in love with God and follow and fellowship and have fun with them than someone who's always talking about what's wrong with the world or wrong with this, that, or the other thing. Because that doesn't sound like love. Love doesn't look for faults. Love is patient, I think. 
I personally prefer love being kind. I think love is able to bear all things because it doesn't even notice that you know there's been any wrongdoing. It just kind of is absorbed with the person that it's in love with. It's so rose-colored glasses, so to speak, that it just can't help but see the good. You know, that person that it's in love with can do no wrong. Remember when you were first in love? Maybe that's what we need to be with Jesus. Maybe that's what salvation really is all about. Falling in love for the first time. I know that's the way I teach it. That's the way I preach it, so to speak. It's the way I relate that information of how I got saved was that I didn't get saved really with this massive, you know, kind of intellectual, you know, kind of stimulated scriptural background, breakup, you know, makeup, kind of like, you know, this is sin, this is, you know, salvation, this is redemption, this is, you know, propitiation, this is, you know, all the accomplished things. No, I just looked around and said, whatever they got, I want. <laughs> They got that, I want that. You know, give me some of that. You know, I'll take what they got. Oh, yeah, maybe. You know, and man, from that moment on, I was in love, and it gets better. <laughs> so all I could say is that the love of God, once God loves you, just goes beyond your capacity to hold it in. It overflows out of you to everyone around you, so that it even causes you to stop sin from even having a hold on you, because. It's not that you want to please the person so much. It's that you're too busy in love with someone to waste your time on sin and other things. You want to spend time with the person you love. Maybe you should do that today. Maybe instead of getting all carried away about everything else, maybe you should spend some time with somebody you love. I'm hoping that's Jesus, but if not, okay. But you know, my personal opinion is I'm going to go spend some time with the Lord because... Frankly, whom have I in heaven but him, and whom have I on earth that loves like he does except him? So, me and Jesus, hey, we're like this. Because <laughs> he's taking care of this. I don't know about you, but I kind of like being me. I kind of like maybe you being you, as long as you're not me. <laughs> you see what I mean? Because you may have a loving relationship with the Lord that far surpasses anything I've ever imagined. And that's all I could ever pray for you.